Uh, no, I don't think there is. And um, we are going to have compulsory codes of practice, um, possibly from April this year, right across Europe. And that potentially affects everybody in uh, the food supply chain, from food processors right back to farmers. So it includes info, uh, stuff on agronomy, includes stuff on um, the actual food production. Um, We've also had a campaign from uh, the, the Food Standards Agency, their Go for Gold campaign, which is trying to get consumers to um, engage more on the issue and just sensible things like cooking to a light brown colour. Well, essentially, it's, it, it, colour is a very good guide because it falls by similar pathways to acrylamide. It's quite a good guide, it's a very good guide for how much acrylamide is forming. So, roast your potatoes to a light brown rather than dark brown colour. Anything crispy, dark, probably not good. That's going to have high levels of acrylamide in. And really that's the only advice. It's just, you know, I don't really want to get into telling people, you know, what they should eat, you know, how they should eat. just sensible things you can do to reduce the amount of acrylamide. That's certainly uh, a, a good tip because Potatoes, people think of them as being dormant, they're not dormant at all, they're biochemically very active. And at 4 degrees C, they start accumulating uh, sugars which contribute to uh, acrylamide my formation. Well, it's really important for wheat farmers, for example, that they ensure that uh, wheat is sulphur sufficient, so it has plenty of sulphur, and that they don't use too much nitrogen. Now that's what the code of practice said. In fact, the code of practice on nitrogen says correct amounts of nitrogen. Well, I'm not absolutely sure what correct is. And you know, the, but, but farmers need to be aware that this is coming and they need to be aware after it's come, you know, how um, the code of practice is enforced, how it's applied, how they need to respond to it. It's also not exactly clear to me, reading the code of practice, where the onus of responsibility lies, whether it's with the food producer to make sure that the farmer has done things like putting enough sulphur on wheat, not putting up too much nitrogen, or if it's the farmer. So, uh, yeah, farmers need to be aware of this situation and see uh, how it develops. Well, we've, we've, in both potato and wheat and rye, we've looked at identifying varieties which have low potential for acrylamide formation. That's something that the food industry can um, make use of already. Um, we're looking at, at varieties which, and genotypes which maybe are not commercially used at the moment, but could be brought into um, breeding programs if they have very low acrylamide forming potential. We've looked at the relationship between free asparagine, this is the amino acid that can accumulate in wheat, gr wheat grain, which is a precursor for acryl acrylamide and a determining factor for acrylamide formation in wheat products, for example, we've shown that. We've looked at the relationship between free asparagine concentration, sugar concentration, and acrylamide formation in, the, in potato. So it's free asparagine and sugars which can interact to give you acrylamide. Uh, and in potatoes, it's sugars which are the more important of the two in determining, determining acrylamide forming potential. We've looked at sulfur application, nitrogen application, um, and we've looked at the genetics which underlie acrylamide forming potential. And um, we'd like to take that forward, I think, mean, uh, using the information that we now have on the genetic control, for example, of asparagine accumulation, how we can make um, genetic interventions to give us a step reduction in acrylamide forming potential. Okay, well, there's no acrylamide in the raw material. It's definitely a processing contaminant. So there's zero acrylamide in wheat, zero in potato. It's when you cook it that it forms. But you can um, get an indication of the acrylamide forming potential. So, uh, now, tests for acrylamide itself you know, is quite difficult. There's no simple test for free asparagine concentration. So I'm, and I am aware of some food companies, particularly in the United States, who are testing for sugar concentration in potatoes at the factory gate and turning some consignments away if they're too high.
one, be aware of this issue, be aware of the codes of practice that are coming and, and, and the demands that may be put on them in terms of what varieties they need to be growing and what crop management practices they need to be using to uh, keep the crinamide forming potential as low as reasonably achievable. And in wheat that means ensuring sulfur sufficiency, ensuring good disease control and only using uh, enough nitrogen to ensure the health, yield and composition of the crop.